So do you think that a lot of these strippers in Ohio are aware of a law like this? They're told, listen, this is something that you're not supposed to do. Have you dug a little bit deeper into the law? Well, I think there's a common sense issue to this. I mean, obviously, the law is clear with regard to people who are appearing all the time. But there's also the fact that people are going to a strip club and they're not there to read books. So I think you have a little bit of an issue between both sides of this. Well, you would also assume that some of those patrons who are not there to read books are not going to go to the police department and press charges if something like this were to happen. So it was key that the police officers were there to witnesses. What have you learned a little bit more about the nature of their presence and how it went down? Well, the police are alleging that it was part of an ongoing investigation, that it's about not just um, the strip club, but prostitution and human trafficking, which is obviously they're all serious issues that need to be investigated. But it's still hard to believe that if they were really investigating it all this time, that they only found three people on one day at one time that broke this law. And when we read the affidavit, it says specifically during her performance, after removing her top, exposing her chest, she began forcing the faces of these patrons and using her bare chest to smack the patrons. Now, we heard Michael Avenatti saying specifically, I'm not going to get into the details of what happened next after he alleges those officers asked if they could do this to Stormy Daniels. So what do you make of the affidavit versus what Stormy's lawyer is saying? Well, it's hard to say at this stage because it's a new breaking story, but I think there might be an issue of entrapment and obviously credibility, uh, obviously on both sides because Stormy Daniels is known to be a stripper and prostitute, but also that the police and other people involved in this investigation had motives for bringing this forward, too. Real quick, can you just go into that explanation of entrapment when it comes to a setup or, or a sting operation as the police department has confirmed this was? Well, it's hard to define exactly. It's a very intricate legal topic, constitutional issues. But it's basically if you're encouraged in some overt manner to commit a crime, then you're not necessarily guilty of it because you didn't necessarily have the intent to commit it. Which is kind of what Michael Avenatti is referring to, it seems. Right. Brad Nicklin, thank you so much. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you, Lynn.